All right, buddy. So uh, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Chris. I'm from Buffalo, New York. But uh, all my friends call me Critty. If you want to call me Critty, just because Chris is such a common name. Critty? Critty. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's what's up. Uh, Buffalo, New York, man. I've been there a couple times. Went out there to see old Niagara. You get tired of Niagara uh, tourists? Yeah, right near the Niagara Falls. It's like a 20-minute drive from right where I live. Literally, yeah. I... At work, I drive past the falls every day at work. Yeah, yeah. I bet y'all get tired of all them tourists, huh? Oh, uh, I stay away. Well, it's like right outside of the falls, like where all the tourists are. Yeah. It's like ghetto heaven. Like, yeah, it right is. outside of the falls. One block this way, one block that way, you're getting shot or robbed. So, like, yeah, bro. tourists come from all over the world. But Niagara Falls is actually a really dangerous place. Yeah, they got a pretty uh good casino scene uh there. I got I won some money at their casino up there, but uh yeah, just a couple wrong feet, bro, and uh you could get got. <laughs> Talk about that casino. I got arrested at that casino also. Oh I, man. I, I was 19. I was with my my pops and uh security wasn't looking. We went for the buffet. And so we snuck in cuz security wasn't looking. So I was hitting the slot machines. Wait, the waitress comes over serving me drinks and then serves me another one. She's like, you look kind of young. Can I see your ID? So I showed it to her and she's like, you're only 20 years old. You're not supposed to be in here. I took my ID back. I was like, actually, I'm only 19, but you know how to read numbers correctly. She walked away. <laughs> Next thing I know, I got the men in black, bro. Probably like 15 dudes in suits behind me. Like, You got to come with us now. Bring me into the back of that casino, handcuffed me, took my picture, they banged Damn. me for like five years from there. Yeah. Damn. I'm like, can we at least go to the buffet still and get some wings? Hell no. It booted me out that bitch. <laughs> That's crazy as hell, man. I put my man. picture on the wall of shame. I was next to some Chinese dude. It said card counter right above his head. Oh, no. So I'm like, they really do zero in on. They put y'all in there. He put you next to the card counters, bro? Next to the card counters, bro. And I was just hitting the penny slot machines. Oh. Oh, damn, <laughs> that's crazy, man. Uh, that's a good memory, though. You know, you can look back and laugh at stuff like that, you know? Oh, it was. I got a picture in the middle of my mugshot on the wall of shame and everything. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Well, speaking of which, man, you're on the channel for getting caught up in the mix, obviously, man, going to old penitentiary lockup system and stuff. And uh, uh, let's start off in the beginning. Well, before we even go back to the beginning, when everything started going downhill for you, man, let me ask you this. If you can speak about it, one that you can speak on, what's one, that, since you already tapped into it a, a little bit, what's one of the wildest things or, or street stories you might have, man? Uh, one, whew, okay, uh, I said you want the one that led me into the penitentiary? Or just anything, anything, a, anything, a sh uh, wild street story. I, a wild street story. So, this, so to begin, it's kind of funny to another thing that, um, when I went into jail, gave me a big head because I used to be, I grew up boxing and wrestling. And then I became a cage fighter. And I was three fights away from going pro before I got injured. So I always walked around with the Napoleon complex because I'm a smaller dude. But mm -hmm. like in my head, I know like I knew how to fight. You could dust someone off real quick. Get, yeah, I started trying to get swole. So I, t I told this dude, uh, he, you know, this big jack dude from around the hood that, you know, he, I knew he was taking steroids. And I'm like, you know, grab me a batch. Mm. He's like, I got you 300 bucks. You know, I'm young and stupid at this time. So I give him $300. A week goes by. He don't got my shit. Another week goes by. He don't got it. I'm like, bro, now you're starting to play games. Like. He, you know he's what? trying to play you for ro on the roids? He's trying to play me for roids, bro. But the thing <laughs> is, is, like. I, I was already, this was a big, stocky white dude, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm from Buffalo where I'm, mostly all my boys are black. But the, the, the funny part about this dude is he knew that I was serious about my money because during that summer, mm -hmm. this kid lived in, um he lived in Depew. It's like a suburb of Buffalo, like uh -huh. a, a bunch of little rich white kids. Yeah. And one of my homeboys moved from Buffalo out there and they jumped him. So a couple of weeks after that, I went down there with like five carloads of people and they were all at the playground and they hopped on the phone with me and they're like, oh, you Buffalo started dropping the N-bomb, N-word this, N-word that, come through, slide through. 
So I drove up there with all my people and we got out. And uh, that's another time I was arrested because it turned into a melee. And my little small Napoleon ass ran in there first. So I got charged with inciting a riot. So I literally have inciting a riot on my paperwork. But <laughs> so the dude who I wanted to get the steroids from was there that day. So he knew that I would come with a lot of people, you know what I mean, that I have backup. And, and everyone's him, adults at this time? We were all about 19 at this time, 18, 19. Okay. So I'm like, bro, I'm going to give you one more week to get me my money. And if you don't, you already seen what I'm capable of and the people that I know. He thought I was bullshitting. So I knew where he lived, and that's a problem. You don't let someone know where you live if you're trying to pull a quick one on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we pull up to his house one night, like four cars deep, and uh, I catch him. He comes walking out the door. He was going to get into another car to leave. So we all got out, like, no, go turn around and go back into your house. We walked back in. I didn't know that he lived with his parents because he had, like, a finished basement. Mm -hmm. His parents like, oh, we're going to call the cops. Get out of here. Da -da -da. And not, I'm not glorifying this or anything. This is when we were young and dumb. Wait, so we hold on. You, you, you snatched him up and took him back into his house? Snatched him up, turned around, walked back into the house, bro. We got oh, back into the house. His parents were in there. We didn't oh know that. Oh, my God. So we had to sit his <laughs> parents down and literally tie him up, bro, like with duct tape and shit so they couldn't call the cops on us. Stop and like, playing, man. That ass, bro. And I'm like, clean out this fucking house. They don't want to pay me over 300 So the mom started crying. I felt bad. She's like, go in my purse. There's 300 in my purse. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I took the 300 he owed me. I said, you're a piece of shit for making us do that i didn't know you lived with your parents but i'm like Damn. now you know like don't do that to people like who you don't really because we were affiliates but not really friends and so it's like you try to walk me not knowing who you were really dealing with and now look what you got yourself into a situation because the people i was with were you know obviously had stuff on them like if his dad would have pulled out a shotgun or some shit when we went in there that yeah. whole story would have probably ended way differently, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, a lot of people don't understand when you're 18, 19, that's your prime time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of getting it, making a name for yourself, man, type exactly. of situations, and uh, you can't be letting nothing slide, you know what I mean? Nothing, and especially like that, and me being the small one surrounded by goons, I'm always looked at like I got to prove a point. And, if I, and because, like I said, this dude was probably... 63250 all steroided up. Thought he was gonna walk me because I was some little dude. Yeah. And like you said, being young and dumb, I had to you know prove myself and me constantly proving myself and drinking alcohol on the weekends was what was causing me to get into a lot of trouble. Cause you know in the club when you're younger people give you that shoulder bump, you got some liquor in you, I'm small, and I know how to fight because I'm a boxer, I'm a cage fighter. And I would just let it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last time I checked, I think I had 77 arrests. But when it got a little more serious, when we started, you know, again, being young and dumb, running, you know, drugs or robbing the dope boys. The next serious, I would say, most incident that happened besides me, you know, getting locked up was these two other dudes in Buffalo took me and, me and my one of my homeboys for like 2000 like 2000 bucks, right? Yeah. So the one night we're driving through the East Ferry Projects in Buffalo and we see the kid. Now the dude I'm with, uh, we'll just call him Lil P. He's a he's a kid. Like he's 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 TTG, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he's ready to go. So we see this dude and we hop out and we just start whooping his ass. That's all we did though, was beat him up. But as we're looking, and you know how projects are set up where there's a million different cut throughs and walkthroughs and shit. Yeah. So as we're getting back in the car, we hear someone else screaming and running out the door. And this dude raising, right? So we get in my car. We go to go flying off. He starts shooting at my car. So I, I put this. I, I shoot not. Again, my homeboy had stamped everything. This bullet came right through my windshield, directly at my face, ricocheted off of the, uh, the dashboard. And where my passenger was sitting, he had his seatbelt on bullet went right through the seatbelt next to his face oh, so i swerved dang. and i hit the car next to me so we rolled down the window and he started letting back 
And I don't know if that dude turned around and fell or if he turned around and took off or just hit the ground not knowing that we were going to – that we were strapped too. But I pulled up out of there real quick. But that was like my whole life flashed before my eyes, bro. And then I started having nightmares for like three months. Like, because like I've had a gun to my head. I've been robbed and shit like that. But actual shootout being shoot at and like the bullet hole being right towards my face, I didn't really think it would affect me like running the streets before that. But after that incident, like I couldn't sleep. I was having nightmares and I'm like, Damn, these people that do run around just shooting shit, not killing, not caring or nothing. Like, you, you got to be a different kind of a savage. So that, like, kind of really opened my eyes into, like, not only that, but the consequences of the shit I was doing. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. could have caught a life sentence over $2,000. Yeah. So yeah. those are two, like, a few of the craziest street stories well those are pretty damn intense bro you know yeah and, uh, i'm I sure you've probably seen a bunch of funny ones too huh oh oh hell yeah a bunch of funny ones bro i seen this dude my brother, my brother <laughs> like, agent, we came back and all the fights were always like 10 on 10 party fights you know house parties always and always people bro. from buffalo or people from the west side show up because Buffalo's not really separated in gangs. Like, there's blood, there's crips and everything, but mm. it's more like east side, west side, north side, mm. or north, you know what I mean? It's more like neighborhoods where you come from. Yeah. So when they meet at parties and clash, it usually ends in fights. But I've seen someone get hit with a croquet stick. Like, who even carries around a croquet stick? Hey, them things are <laughs> kind of damn solid, though, you know? Bro, it did damage. <laughs> Let's just say when his head hit the ground, blood was pooling. Yeah. I thought he was dead. But yeah, I've seen tasers to the face, like almost everything you can see possibly in a street fight. I've seen. Yeah, dude, I was at a house party, man, and it got crazy. And one of the guys outside drinking, because there's a bunch of people outside too in the front yard. This was in a residential neighborhood, right? It was a nicer, nicer neighborhood, like two story houses and stuff. And uh, dude. We're drinking out in the front yard, and dude just happens to kick this car. We're just driving to their house, right? <laughs> he just kicks that joint, but he stops. And it turns out the dude's a well known rumbler in the area, right? Man, like, big mistake. He gets out in the car, tur whole house is fighting out in the yard. But, bro, I'll never forget there's this one guy. He comes running from the backyard with one of those long pool pool leaf scoopers <laughs> like he was got a spear bro running <laughs> out <laughs> beating people with a damn eight foot pole man it was insane house parties get crazy bro they do because you know? that's where all the that's where all the weird weapons come in i've yeah. seen someone get decked with like a heavy metal soup spoon before <laughs> plastic chairs it's like WWE when that's yeah, just... yeah, anything, anything around, man. <laughs> that's crazy. But uh, all right, well, look, street stories are always fun. Uh, but let's jump into it, man. What the hell sent you to the uh, old penitentiary, man? What, what was that? All right, so this is how it started. So we was at a bar this one night, right? <clears throat> uh huh. A and bar. And started when I was. Yeah, we were at a bar. And I was what I was not, yeah I was nineteen okay so they shouldn't even been serving me alcohol and the crazy part is <laughs> it was me and two of my buddies and there was an undercover or not undercover off duty police officer in the bar buying us shots what? because yeah we're in Lackawanna like Lackawanna is like right off Buffalo it's yeah. like a hood of Buffalo like I can walk five minutes and be in Buffalo uh -huh. so. Um, not only that, but I'm sitting there chilling, right? I'm minding my own, just sipping my drink. I didn't even really want to be out that night because it was it was December 23rd. So it was a day before Christmas Eve. And so it's cold, too. Yeah. So now I'm over there minding my own, and I see some commotion going on. My two buddies are getting into it with two other people. And now my two buddies are both big as hell. They're both like 6'3", 240, and they're both Marines. They were home on leave. Oh, damn. And some girl in the bar started dancing with one of my boys. And her boyfriend was there, though. And so I go walking over because her boyfriend obviously stepped up. Like, why are you dancing with my girl? Da -da -da. So I walked over just to see what the commotion was. I didn't even know. 
And this dude turns and looks at me, the dude whose girl was dancing with my boy. He's he's in nothing but a black beat. Now, mind you, bro, it's the middle of winter. This dude's wearing nothing but a fitted and a black beater, all tatted <laughs> out, right? Looks at me, like, you know, tough guy Joe over here. Turns around and looks at me. Instead of my two big-ass friends who his girl was dancing with, looks at me and goes, what the is your little ass going to do? Sit down. I was the fuck, bro? I didn't even say nothing. What you mean? What's my little ass gonna do? I'm like, okay, so it got broken up, the little squabble. So probably like an hour later, like those guys left. It was him, a friend, and they had two girls, but they left. So we're getting ready to leave, and we walk out the bar, and they have like a front porch. And as we were leaving, there was two girls out there that we went to high school with. And so my my buddies wanted to talk to them, and I'm like, Fuck that bro, I only got a t-shirt. I'm like, give me the keys. I'm gonna go to the car and warm the car up. Mm-hmm. And and just by like the grace of God or whatever kept me like, you're not allowed to bring beer bottles out of the bar, you know. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I still had my beer with me. Like they didn't see me carry it out. Mm-hmm. So as I'm walking to the car to go warm up the car, we're all the way in the back of the corner of the parking lot. And as I get up this aisle and turn. Sitting right near their car was this, the, the two dudes and the two girls that they were arguing with in the bar. Mm-hmm. And he, and the dude leans up off the car and gives me that look. So I'm like, motherfucker, I already know. So I grabbed the beer bottle and I put it, like I dumped it and put it behind my back like this. And of, I kept walking. But of course, he v lines towards me trying to look tough in front of the girls probably. Oh, yeah, what you got to say now, you little, mo- again, little motherfucker. Yeah. So he got within distance of me smacked him with the beer bottle he fell backwards bro his shit started gushing and now i'm liquored up so now i'm in hulk mode because once that first you know what I mean? once you hit that spark it's over he falls back onto the car he's leaning now instead of just walking away my dumb ass runs up and pops him with the beer bottle again the beer it, did, bottle it didn't break oh didn't those break. are the worst bro, ones the i'm like am i hitting them like a bitch or something like this should be breaking bro i've but, seen that happen bro and that bro, just, it does more damage when it don't break definitely does and you don't gotta worry about cutting yourself because i've seen that happen too but bro his shit was split from like here to here he ended up getting like 136 stitches but damn right after i hit him the second time his boy speared me from behind but the second I hit the ground, my two boys were over there quick as hell, pulling them off of me, and they were curb stomping that dude. Yeah. So now this is going on. I'm like, all right, let's get the fuck out of here, because this dude is on the ground pooling. So now I'm getting scared, like, shit, I might be in real trouble for this. Like, that dude looks really hurt. But he might die. The whole bar is <laughs> pouring out of the parking lot now, trying to surround us so we couldn't get away. Soon as we hit the exit to pull out, cop car pulls in, swerves right in front of us and gets us. So they arrest us. They take us up to the jail. Surprisingly, they ended up letting us out with a bond, or not a bond, like the, with the, um, whatever, a citation, like come back to court type shit. PR type. And PR, yeah. Because it, I'm guessing because the next day was Christmas Eve. Yeah. So we're walking home with no, no shoelaces and shit. My buddies are like, we're going to get kicked out of the Marines because, you know, you got arrested when oh. you're home on leave. So the first time we went to court, the victim didn't even show up to court and I'm there with a fucking court appointed attorney as my buddies got their, their Marine staff guys like came to court with them. So they're all in their Marine uniforms and shit in the courtroom looking all professional. And I'm sitting there like with <laughs> a court appointed attorney, like I'm about to get my boots smoked. Like, yeah. What ta- the hell? yeah. <laughs> so I told my attorney about it though. Like, how is it not like how am I even because so the charges that I, I got charged with because I told the cops like I that I hit him with the bottle because I didn't want my Marines buddies to lose their careers you know so I'm like I, I did everything like they just saved me from getting my ass whooped basically so they charged me with um a felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon uh with the intent to do great bodily harm or some shit because he was uh was so messed up but the victim didn't show up to court. So they're like, all right, we're going to, um, you know, reschedule this for another court date. Go back to court. Victim doesn't come to court again. Mm. And you have a right to uh, face your accuser, correct? Yeah, three times. So the, so the judge says, if he's not in court the third time, the case will be dismissed. I'm like, bet this dude's a G. He didn't come the first two times. He's not going to show up the third time. Go to the third time. 
He he's not there. Oh. No, he's not there. So I'm like, yes, this shit's about to get dismissed. But there's a new judge on the stand. And I'm like, so I told my attorney, like, is this? Oh, so he has another because three like, times to go through. Well, I, I was expecting that, right? So I asked my attorney, like, what's like, this shit should be dismissed today. Because now this judge is talking about, well, let's give him one more opportunity. And if he doesn't come back, then I'll dismiss it. So I'm like, like he's not coming to court. It should be. All right. So whatever. I'll come back for a fourth time. So I come back for a fourth time. Victim doesn't show up again. So now the judge is like, okay, well, you know what? I've read over the case and I decided I'm not going to dismiss it. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, first of all, I have a right to face my accuser. He's not here. I could have just said I never hit nobody with a bottle. You know what I'm saying? And so he's, uh, he said that the victim didn't have to show up to court. I don't know if that's what the Commonwealth means, but like the state picked up my charges because it was such a violent oh, crime. So, oh, New York's a Commonwealth? New York is a Commonwealth. Oh, they they're the same as charges. us then. Yeah, they don't need yeah. the victim there, bro. All they need they is that statement. That's all. I, but that's the crazy part is I don't even know if they had a statement unless they just went and what off was uh, happened that night. That police report, whatever he said to the yeah, cops. Yeah, the police report exactly is what it was. That, that and the fuck. witnesses, did the witnesses show up? No witnesses either. And that's the thing. But I even said like, hmm. okay, so even if it's not getting dismissed because he didn't come to court, how am I not getting it dismissed on the grounds of self-defense? Like, you can't grab the cameras off the bar. The, the dude approached me as I'm walking to my car. And if I didn't have that beer bottle, those two guys would have beat the shit out of me because they were both way bigger than me. Yeah. Like that yeah. beer bottle is the only thing that was my equalizer. So how is it not self-defense? Yeah. My lawyer is going to look at me and go, because I was facing five years in prison, the judge wanted to give me. Yeah. The only thing that saved me from that is I had a full-time job and um I was going to school at Buff State. So he didn't want to like act like he was giving me a break, even though the shit should have been dismissed. So instead of the five years of that, it got knocked down from a felony to a misdemeanor. But uh, instead of five years in prison, they gave me three years probation. That's so all right. I did. I did the two years and nine months probation, right? And then what do you think happened? They hit me with the that good old urine test. And I went two years, nine months, working, going to school, and not smoking a good old Mary Jane. And I'm like, I got three months to go. They're not going to test me my last three months. Smoked like this much of a doobie, bro. That last night going, my, my PO violates me for it. So he goes, all right, you're going to spend your last three months in Alden, the county jail that we have up here where like you wait for a sentencing or if you got two years or under, they'll keep you in County or in the Buffalo Holden center. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to the County. Now, the reason I got the weekends is because I was doing, uh, because I was going to school and I had a job. So he's like, all right, you can do, he, he basically gave me an option. Do I want to do three months straight in jail or do I want to split it up and do weekends, which ended up being like, however many months that equals out to like every weekend I had to do 16 weekends. Uh -huh. So it was like three and a half months of weekends. But the shitty part is too, like, and that, that span that I was in there, Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve and my birthday all landed when I was in like on the weekend locked up in the County. <laughs> what are the odds of that, go, huh? go figure. Right. Yeah. So, so now we get into going into the gym. Just like you see in the movies and shit. First day I walk in, bro. We get oh well no. Okay, so Erie County, they keep the week I don't know if this do you guys have weekenders in Virginia? Yeah, we like, got week we got weekenders. We got okay, weekenders. Okay, now do they keep do they keep them with general population or do they No, separate they separate them? them. Okay, so check this. This is where it was different for me as well. So in Alden, they take the weekenders and you go across the street. You're not with general pop. And across the street, it's sweet because they just got open hallways, open bedrooms, basically, that you could walk in and out, go down to the uh, the little rec room, watch TV, go into your bed. Like, you had free roam of this hallway. It was like a classroom hallway that you had free roam of. So it was yeah. sweet over there. But I, I wouldn't be getting no commissary or nothing because 
on weekend, if you had weekends, you'd have to drive up there on a Tuesday, put money on your books so you had commissary for the weekends. Yeah. But that shit was like a 45 minute drive for me. So I wasn't doing that. You just roughed it. So, but a reason they kept me in Gen Pop is because I was prescribed Klaudipins at the time. And if you bring your prescription of medicine with you, only the the nurse at the facility can give it to you. The CEOs can't, and only CEOs are with the weekenders. So they had to keep me in the main building with General Pop so I can get my medicine. Uh huh. But that was also a way for me to stay over in general population because I'm like, the weekenders I was coming in with, the group of them, you know, just like weirdos and just people I wasn't vibing with. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh huh. So. I'd much rather stay with Gen Pop and I get this medication that I can cheek, do whatever with, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Be a way to make my own commissary. So the very first weekend I walk in there, not even the, the very first night I walk in, you know, they, they give you your, your blanket, your, 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 uh, your sweatpants, your hoodie, everything you need for the weekend. That's all you get. And a toothbrush and you don't even get a plastic cup. Like they don't give you a cup for water or nothing. You yeah, get you the drink room. from the sink. Yeah. You got to drink from the sink. Exactly. So first day I walk in, I'm in an open bay dorm, not uh, closed cells. So they send me all the way to the back wall. So I go back there. I'm set, bro, as I'm setting up my blanket and pillow, like I don't even got my shit tucked looking good yet. Right. Uh-huh. I turn around and in between the bunks, this black dude, big, small, buffy little black dude, wolf, dreadlocks. Hey, who are you? I turn around. I'm like, this shit is really about to happen. Like, I've been watching Lockdown 2021 forever. Like, this, like, you know what I mean? Just movies. Like, you're going to test as soon as I get in, putting the honey bun on my, on my bed type shit. But he's like, no. He's like, uh, how long are you here for? And I was like, man, I'm only here for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, just leave me alone, dog. I don't want no trouble. Like, I'm here for weekends. I ain't trying to have to make it into anything more than Was that. there other people in there doing weekends? Yeah, well, okay, so only one other person came to the general pop. That gets into the end of my story because there was only one other person that stayed in general pop with me. But when we come in on the weekends, there's probably, I'd say, 15 other people that got bussed across the street. And then so me and only one other person would stay with Gen Pop. Okay. But each weekend, me and him weren't always in the same pods. So it switched every weekend. So the, that first weekend, though, I was in Kilo dorm, and he comes up, and he's like, well, if you ain't here that long, then I want that blanket and that pillow. I'm like, motherfucker, bro, of course. And, like, smallest white dude in the whole pod, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I, like, I got to prove myself, right? Same like I was doing on the streets. So I just pulled the back of my shoes back up, and I'm like, do what you got to do, bro. Like, in my head, I know I can fight, though, so I can hold my own. So he comes walking up to me with his chest pumped. I'm like, all right, like, you know, my heart's pounding though. Like I'm about to get my. So ass he, he was face. he talking to you disrespectfully? He kinda, but that's the thing. I couldn't tell if he was being. Maybe serious. he just wanted your stuff when you laughed. You know what I mean? Well, well, check check this out. That's what I'm getting into, bro. He ended up. Yeah. He was, he was kind of trying to like debo me off like a next Friday type shit. Like I, I like that blanket, boy. You won't give oh, it to me. Oh, so okay, like, okay, okay. That, like, and then he just starts busting out laughing. He's like, I'm just busting with you, bro. What's up? Oh, okay. Oh, bro, like, I'm here for the weekends, man. You got me thinking I'm about to catch a whole long sentence and shit. Uh... And then he's like, no, bro, you need some soups and candy bars. And, you know, at the time, I'm thinking, like, no, I just, no, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm good. But then I'm watching TV and shit later that night. He comes over and, you know, throw me some soups and shit. We end up picking it. He ends up being mad cool. So now as other like new prisoners would come in every night or every other night, like this one skinnier white kid, even smaller than me came in and he's watching the TV the one day and me and Wolf become friends now. So Wolf pulls up a chair. I pull up a chair and Wolf's like, yeah, boy, I'm going to get that ass in the shower tonight. Oh my God. The little white kid looks at me like, is he being serious? I was like, bro, you better give it up to him. You don't know how my first night was in here, dude. You don't want to see him mad. He was like, oh my god, is there anything I can give you? Like, I don't want to go in the shower. And then Wolf just starts dying laughing. So I'm like, oh my god, you guys are a bunch of clowns, right? Oh, you're so, clowning for real. Clowning for real. So I ended up uh, being in that in that pod. I actually knew another dude in there from Lackawanna, this uh, little black dude, Money Mike. 
And while I was in there, another dude came in. So I knew a few people in the pod because it's mostly Erie County, Buffalo, you know, that get shipped there. Uh -huh. So after a couple weekends, I started getting more comfortable. But now, you know, being a weekender, they're going to, uh, other prisoners are going to start applying pressure to you to want to bring shit in. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. We don't get weekenders over here. How are you in general pop if you're a weekender? And I'm like, because I get medication, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm able to stay over here. Yeah. All right, well, yo, check this out. My girl's going to bust you down a script. Just swallow them, bring it in, like, and I'll break you off. She's going to give you 200. Then I got this other dude over here talking about, bro, I've been in here for six months. My bail is only $50. Like, when you get out Friday, can you, or when you get out Sunday, can you bail me out? I'm like, you've been in here six bucks. months on a $50 bail? Like, how does that Damn. even make sense? So... <laughs> As I'm going along, I can only weekend, imagine everybody coming at you, man. The pressure was getting heavy. So. That's like a th guy having three ways, giving three ways. Pressure comes quick. <laughs> Every direction, bro. And so, but my dumb ass being young and stupid is starting to think like, okay, because every weekend I'm starving, mind you, because I have no commissary. Oh, hold on. And so, hold on. Let me before we go any further. Is weekends all you did? Yeah. For, so you never been to prison? I never been to actual prison. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was facing that, but at the end of the story, I'm I, waiting I, for I, you I, to I, say something to send you to prison. <laughs> it almost did send me to prison when I get into what I'm about. Okay, to Okay, go you. ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to know. I was just making sure. All right, go ahead. Okay, so so as I'm getting more comfortable, you know, doing the weekends, I'm like, I'm hungry. I can't just keep eating one soup a weekend. Like, I'm already skinny enough. Uh -huh. And not for nothing, too, Um, I had a past addiction that I was oh, dealing yeah, with yeah, at yeah. the same time. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So yeah. I also had to figure out a way to not be withdrawn when I was in there because it was getting like that at that point. So at first, I'm like, all right, let me try to sneak. And this is how stupid I am thinking, like, even if I got caught with this, it wouldn't be as bad because it's not a narcotic. So yeah. I'm like, let me try sneaking in some sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. So I got the sleeping pills in. And when you first Why, by swallowing them? No. Suitcase? Uh, no, no, no. So I got, I, I, I can say it now because it's already, they've figured it out. It's already hip to it because my buddy became a CEO and he knew how I was getting them in. Oh, cheek. And he's them. like, bro, I will. I put a band-aid on my thumb, right? Ooh. And I used to take some clips and put them underneath the white film and wrap it up like that. But that's what I started doing. But when I started with the sleeping pills, they were small, skinny circles. And I will put them underneath this band-aid, only like two or three at a time. And I would wrap the band-aid around my finger. And there, I, like, I expected why I started with the sleeping pills because I'm like, Going into there, like if they see a bandage or a wrap, like they'll make you take it off and rebandage it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's what my other buddy, that's a CO, he's like, bro, we like you're not allowed to bring in band aids or nothing like that. I'm like, they never once checked underneath my band aids, but I think they were starting to catch on to what I was doing. But so after I was breaking in the sleeping pills, I was <clears throat> now like I said too, they would move me from pod to pod, and when I think they uh started catching on to what I was doing is why I think they started moving me to see like, how is this kid coming in? And he's getting so much commissary now, but the first couple of weeks, like I had nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the open bay dorms, it was easier to move around and slide shit and hide shit because if I wanted to, I'd be like, just keep it in your bunk. I'll come over and get it. But when they would move me to like a different weekend, I'd be in a, a single cell pod. They would walk in and my cell would be stacked with honey buns and, all this other shit. And like when I would bring in the pills in the single man cell, I would, I would crush them up and I would make little lines. And so like one of the other inmates, I'd be like, go ahead, just go hop in my cell. It's on the desk. He'd go in there, do the line and leave me my commissary. Mm -hmm. But these dudes started to like fiend out for me to be there every weekend. Like, I can't wait till Chris gets here Friday. Cause that's <laughs> when the good shit is coming. Cause once I got comfortable, I started bringing in, so people were going crazy. I, I was living like a like I was living like a king in there after the first few weekends, and <laughs> so the CEO started to like, how is this kid walking in? But when I started bringing the good shit, it got so bad that by the time I'm even unrolling my bed and shit, I come out, I, I 
kid you not, bro. It looks like a lunch line. And the inmates would be lined up in the, like, next to my cell. Like, sing, seven people, single order, file line, ready to come in. And I'm like, you guys ain't making this look too hot. Like, I just walked in, you guys are single file order. Waiting like, you got a pharmacy in there, man. Yeah, like, fall back. <laughs> like, the CEOs ain't stupid, and they can see right from here. That's crazy, like, bro. get me caught up. <laughs> <laughs> so the next weekend I go in one of the crazier weekends too. I go in on a Friday, right? And I used to go in at five o'clock. At four o'clock, like I'm literally driving to the jail. And this girl I was dating for three years, bro, my homeboy sends me a picture of her kissing some other mo- kissing another dude. Damn. So I'm like, what? So I get to the jail. Now, mind you, I'm pissed off. I'm with this girl for three years, and I get this picture right before I get there. This weekend, they didn't have no beds open for me. So they put me in a solitary confinement cell for the weekend. Bro, you know how crazy that thing drove me? Being in solitary confinement only for three days, having just gotten a picture of my girl cheating on me. Like, I couldn't call her. Torture. I didn't know what to think. I had no one to talk to about it. Torture. Like the first eight hours. Maybe it was best for you to have went through that in that time. You might have done something stupid, man, you know, if you're immediately. Exactly what I was thinking because the next weekend, no, I I don't know how you would ever even survive longer than three days in the box, bro. After, (laughs) I think, seven hours, I was seeing, like, hummingbirds and deer and shit talking to myself. Like, bro, is Mickey Mouse really in the cell with me right now? Like, they didn't give me a pencil, nothing. Like, especially yeah. being as a weekender, I, I again, like I said, I couldn't even get a cup. I was drinking out the sink. Yeah. So the weekend after that, like you said, lucky I didn't lash out. They still didn't have an open door, uh, um, an open bed. But instead of solitary, they put me in a, in a PC unit pod. Mm-hmm. And again, that Friday, right before I went in, because me and her had been arguing throughout the week. Like, once I got out, I called her. Like, is that picture about you know what i mean like you're cheating on me on the weekends now like well i need you here for me you're out cheating on me on the weekend oh no jody on the weekends man she was like with the jody on the weekends she did me bro she jodied me on the weekends so damn bro that's rough man it was rough and then it it happens to a lot more people though than people might think (laughs) it does oh i i believe it and that's why i like like you said, I'm like, maybe this is for the best. But then yeah. next weekend, I got put in um, a PC unit. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you ever heard the case around here. It made national news. This dude, Dr. Corasanti, he was a well-known doctor. And one night, he was driving wasted. And he ran over a little girl and killed her. Damn. And then he was trying to play it off like it was no big de- Like, he didn't stop either. He drove home, tried to clean the bumper and everything. So he was known as a piece of shit when he got sentenced. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he deserved it. So this weekend, I'm still in my feelings about my girl because that's three years down the drain. Now I'm back in a PC unit, so I'm not eating again for the second week. Oh, you see him. I see him. Bro, he's he's sitting out at the the coffee table, like one of the tables watching the news and shit. So I'm like, I have all this aggression and anger in me because of my girl. I see this dude sitting in PC, reading in legs crossed, reading newspaper, drinking coffee, watching TV. And Chilling. all I could think is, you scumbag, like that girl's in a grave and you're over here sipping coffee, reading the newspaper. So I'm like, but after next lockdown, I'm going to come up from behind him because I didn't have no commissary either. So I'm like, I don't got nothing to lose here in this PC unit. I'm like, he deserves an ass whooping because he, I, he only got two years for... Uh, driving drunk and killing that little girl. He only got two years. So in my head, I'm like, I'm about to give this dude the ass whooping he deserves. So right after lockdown, I go over to the table. And I didn't come from behind him. I sit down at his table right across from him. And I kind of look down and I look up and I'm thinking how angry I am about my girl and shit. Mm-hmm. And like how I'm fire off on this dude and just let him have it. You know, just let the aggression out. He deserves it. It is what it is. He looks up at me and goes, Oh, what's going on, man? He's like, you don't got, like, no coffee, newspapers, nothing? I was like, no, man, I'm good. And he's like, well, here. Starts throwing me some coffee, gives me a newspaper, tossing shit across the table. And I look down, and I look up, and, like, I'm thinking to my like, this dude don't even know I'm about to rock his jaw in about two seconds. 
And then he starts talking, saying something else. And I'm like, bro, just stop. And I'm like, you know, I know who you are, right? And he goes, most people in here do. That's why I'm in this unit. And I go, yeah, you're a piece of shit. And he goes, starts telling me the story. He goes, brother, I've never been in trouble my whole life. I dedicated my whole life to being a doctor. I made one mistake that night, drinking too much. Ended up being like the sweetest guy in the world. And I'm like, damn, maybe, you know, it is true. Like one wrong mistake, one wrong decision can change your whole life. You know what I mean? And all his patients gave him good reviews as a doctor and everything. So I was like, that gave me a whole different perspective on life too. You know, about making just one stupid mistake and all the dumb shit I was doing on the streets. And so after that, those two stints in the, the solitary and the PC unit, they put me back into the uh, general pop unit. So I was in there doing my thing again. And before I would leave on the weekends, this was another one of my hustles. You're supposed to wrap your, your hoodie, your sweatpants, all that shit in your blanket, your pillow, and put it in a bin. But instead of giving my shit back, I'd go around like, here, bro, who needs an extra sweater? Boom. All right, when I come back next Friday, I want three soups for the sweater. Here's my blanket, but I want five soups when I come back next Friday. <laughs> so I had some dude in there even keeping the track of me, like, oh, you know, Jay owes you three soups for the sweater. Uh, Big M owes you, you know, a candy bar for the pillow. That's so crazy. I kept it like that. So every Friday I came in, I was stacked right away. So the so I knew the seals were catching on, and my weekends are winding down now, right? But me being a dumbass, I'm still bringing this shit in, not only for myself because it helped the weekends go faster, but you know, just also knowing not not like saying I was a pod boss, but I had enough commissary where I can literally, hey bro, go do this for me, or can you go do that, go do that. Like I didn't have to do nothing. All I had to do was break off a piece of this or something. And they do anything I asked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, let me get the TV for the night. Like, two other people got the TV. Go on my son, I'll bust you down two pieces. I got the TV to myself for the night. Little shit like that. Uh-huh. So how is this little white dude got the whole TV? Yeah. So, like, the, the, the dynamics of the visuals obviously didn't make sense. Uh-huh. So my very last weekend, and this is where I almost caught. Or no, let me back up. Let me back up. Because I got one other story first that while I was in there, to show you how different the, the West Coast and the East Coast are with like the race, you know, white, black type shit. Uh-huh. I was at the microwave and uh, I was cooking a soup. So when I was on the streets in between doing my weekend bids, me and my boy ended up running a lick on this girl because she was just a little a little street fiend. Yeah. So I took her. So I robbed her. Not going to lie. Whatever. I'm not proud of it. I'm talking about passion. <laughs> now I'm in, I'm in the weekend cooking my ramen noodles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh-huh. now no one in this pod knows. I only know Money Mike, the only little black dude I know from Lackawanna. Don't know nobody else in this pod. So I'm cooking my noodles, and I hear, "Hey, you, you're Chris, right?" So I turn around, and I see four white dudes, skinhead motherfuckers. They swatch the goods on the like. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, why? What's it to you? Like, who's asking? He goes, you robbed my girl Vale, right? And in my head, oh, I'm like, oh, damn. Shit. I'm like, how the, f- how did they know who I am, what I looked like, that I was in here on weekends? Like, how did they know that? <laughs> Somehow they tracked me down. And I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, keep me. Oh. He know what he does. I'm going to get the noodles out. He slams the microwave door shut on me. So I turn around. I was like, all right, then what is it? Like, I'm not going to explain myself about robbing no girl or nothing, you know what I mean? But luckily for me, so in my head, I'm like, I'm about to get my ass whooped by four skinheads right now. Okay, come on. Money Mike was playing um, spades at the card table, literally right behind the microwave. Uh And he overheard what was going on. So he stood up, and he stood in front of me and in front of these white dudes. And he's like, yo, you guys, you guys got a problem with my boy Chris here? And he was like, no, we were just questioning him about something. So the other three uh, black dudes at the table got a big dude. Money Mike's a little dude, but stocky. The other guys were about 6'2", six, 6'4", six, towers over these over these white dudes, right? Now, they all come and stand right in front of me, too. And they're like, ain't no questioning. 
Stop questioning him. Like, you got one problem with him, you got a problem with us. I suggest he's fucking keep it moving. All right, we, all right, all right. We don't have no problem. Walked away, didn't say nothing. I just dapped up money. Mike, like, man, y'all just saved my ass. He's like, bro, you from Buffalo. You already know how we do. And then they just went back to playing spades. But I'm like, that just shows you right there, like, East Coast versus West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Like, that type yeah. of shit was going to happen. Yeah, that definitely probably more than likely 99.9% won't happen. <laughs> and I'm about to get my ass whooped by another group of white dudes. So. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of known now around from getting from pod to pod. People who are recognizing me on the weekends now is kind of like the dude who gets shit in. Yeah. And so I was kind of getting scared with it. But still, my dumbass, my last weekend there, bro. And but by the grace of God, again, I say everything that happens for last me. weekend, and you still brought some, bro. Bro, <laughs> oh, God. you know, when you're on drugs, you don't think, you don't give a fuck, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You get away so many times, too. You, you, you get yeah, away man. so many times, I think I'm on to it. I got away 15 weeks of weekends over three months of doing this, shit. They, they don't got me, right? So we come in, the dog <clears> skips out. I got two. The dog sniff us. Everything's good. I go through, get the first strip search. Everything's good, right? So we're in line going to get back into our pods. I'm like, boom, I made it again. I'm good. They come back out and they go, they pull me and the other weekender. Remember I said two of us stayed with Gen Pop? They pull me and him out of line. Mm -hmm. They bring us into a different room and they go, we're going to be straight up right now with you motherfuckers. And that's how they talk too. You know, they talk to you like shit. Mm -hmm. we know it's one of you mother bringing these drugs into these units because there is no other possible way that these drugs are getting in here. So how, how are you? So they got us to right next to each other and they make us strip search again, checking them out, checking the hair, checking the ears. And not for nothing, it was cold as hell in that room. And I'm standing there booty ball naked. <laughs> and now mind you, I got these things on my thumb, bro. My heart is thumping. And now I'm clutching my hand like this trying to hide my thumb with the Band-Aid just because I didn't want to give them no reason. So I'm standing there like this, clutching my thumbs, right? And I'm yeah. kind of shaking, though, because it's freezing. Yeah. And I'm butt naked. The cop pulls the other line, oh, what are you shaking for? Are you nervous? And I see him look down at my hands because my hands were shaking. I'm, I'm cuffing my thumbs, though. I was like, bro, I'm cold as fuck. You strip searched me three, two times already. The dog searched me. Like, what more do you want from me, bro? Like, they're not coming from me. These guys were so pissed that they couldn't catch me, bro. So they bring me back to the dorm, and I'm in a I'm in a single uh, cell dorm this time now. It's not the open bay dorm. I'm in my regular single joint with uh, the other weekender because they did the same thing to him because they knew it was coming from one of us, but they couldn't figure out how or where. So everything happens as it usually does. I go around, collect my commissary, everything for the weekend. I got all my honey buns, chips. I got a cup of Kool-Aid made with my cup and my bowl, everything, right? <laughs> and this is where I say everything happens for a reason, though, and this is where it got tricky. So every weekend that I would do it, if I would break a piece off or I would keep it on my finger, I would rebandaid it. And you know what I mean? So I kept it on my thumb at all times. But for some reason, this weekend, when I got into my cell, the Band-Aid, like, kind of ripped a little bit. So it wasn't really, like, it kept sticking as good. So I'm like, I, I took it out of it, and I just put them in, in the middle of the magazine pages that I had. And I just tossed it up on my desk, you know what I mean? Because it was about to be lockdown. So right before lockdown, the other weekender, because he has no commissary or nothing either, he was a poor street dude comes to my cell like, hey, bro, can I grab a couple of those magazines for tonight? I ain't got shit. I was like, yeah, no doubt. Here, you know, I give him the magazines. Soon as the door is locked for lockdown, I'm like, fuck, because I gave him the magazine that I stuffed him in. Yeah. And that's the magazine I gave him. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, you know, when lockdown comes, I'm like, bro, I gave you the wrong magazine. He's going to be, you know what I mean? He's going to keep them for himself. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, damn, I just took the L on those, right? Not even five minutes later, bro, my cell door pops. I, I swear it had to be every CO in the Erie County Holding Center. They come in and pull me out. And now, mind you, this is single cell bay. Female COs and everything. Female male officers strip search me again in the cell. Couldn't find nothing. 
Then they make me stand out in the middle of the pod, but naked, like this, in the middle of the pod. I'm looking up. Everyone in their windows is staring down at me, butt naked, with the female officers as they're going through my cell rating. Couldn't find it because I put them in the magazine and I gave them to the other weekenders so that they weren't in my cell. On accident. Like, oh, on accident. The accident saved my life. But they were so mad that they didn't find anything. They opened up all my chips. They opened up all the honey buns. They stepped on them, dumped them on my bed. They dumped my Kool-Aid all over my pillow and my blanket. Threw all my shit. Like, enjoy your last weekend here. Slam the door. Yours, man. Your damn weekend story was far more entertaining than I could possibly ever imagine a weekender story could be, bro. <laughs> well, what's up, man? Are you, uh... I mean, how long How long ago was that? You've been, you've been free for a while, right? Yeah, that, like, I, so pro the probation ended when I was 22. <clears throat> I'm 32 now. But, oh, okay. So you've been out. out of it. I, yeah, in that point, like I said, I was, I was, th I was still an asshole. Like, me, me and four of my buddies had our own house. So it was like the trap house party. So it was still some of my friends selling drugs and I was still getting arrested on the weekends for fighting. So, like literally overnighters every freaking weekend for drinking and fighting and you just wise it up a little shit. bit. Oh yeah, a lot more shit I could have done serious prison time for yeah. that I wasn't hit to the consequences until I started getting a little bit older. Yeah. And yeah. the one crazy part about that shootout that I had mentioned at first, what really is like, all right, I'm done with like the messing around with the gangs and stuff like that, because I was with that same kid. And we're driving down the street one random night, thinking I'm taking him home. And he's going through his book bag, and he's like, turn down this street. I'm like, all right. I'm like, this ain't your street. Where are we going? Well, the people we had a dispute with, he pulls out a gun with the extended mag. I'm about to shoot his mama's house up. I'm like, what? So I hit the gas. I go flooring past it. I'm like, bro, we almost got killed over this. And you want to go shooting at his mom's house? I'm yeah. like, no, get out of my car. And then that's kind of when I really fell back, like, from the street life and, you know, try making my life better. And then seven years ago, my first daughter popped out, and that's when I tried to, like, really put my life in order. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my UFC dream of being a fighter didn't work. And so I've just been just trying to work and grind and take care of my babies. And, well, that's what's know, up, man. Do what I gotta do to stay out to stay out of trouble. Yeah, because... ain't nothing wrong with that. And, and you know, uh, you know, you're very fortunate, man. Like you said, everything happens for a reason, and it seems like someone's been watching over you, man. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, bro. From... And and not only that, like this last since the beginning of this year alone, I've had two friends get murdered. My cousin got murdered, and then two of my best friends caught life sentences for murdering somebody. I'm like, so within one year, I watched five people in my close circle, like they say, you know, in a, a, a grave or in a cage. And, but yeah, it's unfortunate, but I'm fortunate enough to have my daughters and be able to be away. Like, you know, a lot of the gang affiliates or people that I was around were acquaintances, but don't get me wrong. I was like, you know, they're not all bad dudes. Yeah. Like, you know, the kid I introduced you to, like, cool as hell. So I still keep in touch, you know, on regular basis, but, like, actually out there running the streets and doing stupid shit. You know, like, I work my full-time job and, you know. Tired as hell. <laughs> do what I got to do. And like I said, my father did six years in Attica, but this is back in the early 90s yeah. when Attica was roaring. And I've heard, and, you know, he told me straight demon stories from there. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I know my uh, uh, my brother-in-law did 14 years throughout Clinton, Wendy, Attica, all of them. And he's a blood gang member. And so I had asked him too, you know, like my little white self, like if I had been put into Attica at that time, like would you have accepted me? And, he goes, you know, as long as you put in the work and do your mission, they accept you. Like black and white, like nothing like that is segregated around here at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, you know, some people have been to the pen. You know, you can bring them my way. And I'll gladly hear their story as well. Uh, got anything going on now? Did you like a shout out or anything? Maybe uh, you want yeah, people yeah, to yeah, reach no, out or maybe follow you or something? Hell yeah, for sure. Um, that's definitely one of the guests I want to get on here to tell you them stories. My brother in law, like I, I just said, did those 14 years. He's. He, celebrities, rappers, like he was in there with everyone, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I remember you touching into that about yeah, yeah send him my yeah, way, yeah. man. So I, I we definitely will then and knowing that like we linked up now too makes it easier, bro. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, but, man, anytime, man. Yeah, like I said, right now I'm just trying to work on my own YouTube. If people want to follow it, it's Critty Reacts, C R I D D Y Reacts, like reaction channel. It is react to all different type of music, but uh, I've been trying to do different videos, like you know, I, turn it into like a documentary interview type thing, like you do. I mean, your page is way bigger than mine with my what measly one point three thousand subs. I'm trying to navigate my way through the YouTube scene because, like, like I also said, I I did deal with addiction through my life too, and I would say, you know, everyone that has gone through it. Going through those withdrawals, bro, when I was in that solitary confinement for those three days, withdrawing, that, like, I wouldn't w wish that on my worst enemy. And so on my channel, too, I also talk about my addiction and how I overcome it, and I try to give advice to people to, like, not go down that road. And, like, I hope I could just, like, reach a younger audience, kind of like you do. Like, stay, stay, stay your ass out of jail. You know, whether it's coming from me, like I said, a small white dude, or a big black gangster. Like, everyone has their own life that they live, no matter how they unfold. We all got our own stories, you know? Yeah. And if any of it can help anybody, I'd be happy with that. You know what I mean?